I'm really excited to present our next speaker. His name's Andy Brown, and he is the owner of the Climber School of Real Estate. He's also an incredible presenter. Now, I know him from my days back in Toastmasters, but he, he's built such an amazing business, and it's all really been built because of his <clears throat> exemplary efforts as a local networker. You know, he's, he's the guy that knows the guy, you know, that everybody really talks about. You know, He's that guy for me. So I, I appreciate your time, Andy. Thank you so much for sharing your knowledge and participating. You're welcome. I'm excited to be here. This is great. Great job, Joel. So, the, the real question that I really want to get this kicked off with is, you know, what kind of advantages do, can somebody have from developing that local network? Well, I'm, I think there's got to be an old Oriental story that goes along with this. And I can't think of it, but it's, <laughs> it has something to do with, you know, one monkey telling another monkey. And I think, I think people lose sight of how many other people, every single person that they know knows. Mm. So, you know, for example, just to scale it for the story, if, you know, if you know 10 people, they probably know 50 to 100 people themselves. And if you tell half of everybody who they know, you've now exponentially grown your database and you haven't done a single thing except said hi to a friend. Right. I think people forget about that. It's going to be very powerful. Exponential growth is, is um, a very powerful machine. Yeah. And as far as, you know, companies, what kind of companies have really started, you know, in a local area and grown nationally? Do you, do you know of any examples like that? Well, you know, my area is in real estate and real estate education. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of companies that have, uh, for instance, real estate companies, mortgage companies, even smaller title companies that have started locally and grown. And that's what they do. They use their existing database of friends and family and grow from there. Mm -hmm. And I believe what they do is they, they, they make every new customer feel like you're now in the family. Yeah. And people want to help their friends. So if you turn your customers into friends, they want to help you. But there's a lot of them. Um, uh, I can think of lo some local mortgage companies that I know, Fidelity Funding Mortgage, the mortgage firm, certified mortgage planners. They're all local and they've all grown. They're pretty big now for a small local company. There's other small real estate companies. Your company is a good one, right? Mr. Checkout. You started local and you have, I've been, it's wonderful watching how you have grown nationally. Th thank you. Step by step. Yeah. And as far as you know, developing that local base, I, I, there's so many opportunities out there to <laughs> really you know network and to, to really connect with people in your community. Can you give me some examples of things that you know all over the country that take place where you know somebody can go out maybe once a week to a networking event to really connect with more people? Absolutely. Meetup for me was fantastic, especially during the low years, the end of 2007, 2008, 2009, 2010. Uh, that was a fantastic way to go meet more uh, entrepreneurs who, who knew that success is related to or directly proportional to not only the number of people you know, but think about this, Joel, the number of people who know you and what better way is there to make sure that you know more people and more people know you than get out there to things like meetup groups. I know for a long time, I went to every single solitary free coffee meetup event that there was. And I have a lot of friends now, even yeah. still from that, what was it, almost 10 years ago, nine, 10 years ago. Toastmasters is a phenomenal way, you mentioned that, Toastmasters is a phenomenal way to get out there and meet new people. And when you start getting into higher levels beyond the club, the area, the division, the district, all you're doing is meeting more spectacular, motivated, intelligent, creative people, which, you know, is never a bad thing. And, you know, there's more, there's, there's, there's networking rents, there's a, a friend of mine who's done very well in BNI, and there's other ones as well. Within my real estate industry, there's local events too. Something that I used to participate a lot in is the Women's Council of Realtors. They welcome everybody in. There are meetings and committees and councils going on all the time with the local Orlando Board of Realtors. Uh, there's another one. Um, oh, um, Chambers of Commerce are a fantastic way to get out there and meet people and get more people to know you. 
I think where a lot of people go wrong is they feel like the, their number one job is to sell themselves. Mm -hmm. So they, they put out the wrong energy, the wrong introduction, and they talk and talk and talk and talk. I feel like, and this is when you knew me with power training concepts, mm -hmm. this is what I used to teach. If they can go to any of these events that I just mentioned and figure a way out to kind of zip it and shut up and listen more, ask questions, and be more interested about that person in front of you, I think they would be surprised with the results, actually. I think they'd be very, very surprised. It's a great point. You know, one thing that I that I heard over the years is when you go to these networking events, you know, your goal should be to connect people to at least five other people, you know, either in the room or in your network. You know, what other tips uh, would you have for somebody that's maybe going to their first networking event? Well, you're making me uh, remember a day. I don't know if you remember uh, a really cool company that was in the Central Florida area called The Knowledge Shop. And I'm sad and not around anymore, but this was like an esoteric adult learning university for anything and everything you think of. Hmm. And I actually took a class called How to Work a Room because hmm. I wasn't really a good networker. And the number one takeaway I still have to this day is take a host mentality and behavior when you go to these things. Even though you don't know a single soul, you probably would like to. You have to assume that everybody there, they're feeling the same way. Oh my gosh, I wish I knew somebody. Interesting, somebody yeah. Somebody. So everyone is dying for someone to come up and talk to them. If you take, pretend like you're the host, you know everybody, how are you doing? What's going on? Are you comfortable? Walk up to a complete stranger and take that host mentality. You may be making their day and you could make one of the best connections you've ever made. That's and I, I still do that, by the way. Yeah. I go I go to something, I don't know a single soul, a little switch goes off and I remind myself, take on the host mentality, walk up and make other people feel better. And um, I, number one, it works. Number two, I enjoy it. I made a lot of friends that way. That's an excellent, uh, excellent What point. can I do to help you? And yeah. The thing is, you know, I hope you don't mind me going up, but you are great at this. You are fantastic. I've learned a lot from watching you. Well, I appreciate that. But you know, a lot of our audience is, uh, you know, they're in the retail space where they either have a product or they're selling products. And they don't really think about how developing a local market can really help them. Where uh, developing that local base could help them, let's say, weather a storm, such as a national account dropping them or something like that. But you know, how do you how do you spend time focusing on marketing locally as opposed to you know going after the big fish? How do you, how do you really manage your time on that? Well, the way I manage my time, and I'm, I'm not too sure if I should be proud of this or embarrassed, but. <laughs> You know, I have such a responsibility to to the class and my students that that's the number one priority. Uh, as soon as I'm finished with that, boom, I get on on the other market. Doesn't matter if if it's um, a ten hour class, I do a little bit at the end of the day. A six hour class, I can do a little bit more in the afternoon. Hmm. You probably know what I mean when I say it always feels like there's more that you can be doing. Mm -hmm. So in this day and age, here's what the challenge is. You have physical uh, flesh to flesh marketing. Sorry, mm -hmm. that's the cat. My, my live streaming students, they like to, they refer to our cat as the, uh, the goat. <laughs> the goat house. Anyways, you still have to get out there. It's the people you know, the relationships, and hopefully even wanting them to be in partnership with you mm -hmm. because you have something of value. It's not just the product, I believe. It's also your energy, your personality, your heart. I believe that goes a long way. And then in this day and age, it's the internet. As I like to refer to it is the Google. <laughs> you have to keep the Google happy. They are the king of the jungle. So it's not only keeping the Google happy, but you need to be deep and you need to be broad across what I call the, the, the internet and the SEO and the SEM universe. So I am constantly, constantly, constantly working that, Joel. Exactly. Working stuff we have and learning new concepts because there's always something new around the corner. And it just takes time. 
And I'm going to keep doing that, and you know, until we sell the school, hopefully, if, you know, for a hundred million dollars, and then you know, I'll be happy to retire and let somebody else do it. Well, as far as you know, from your experience, you know, pressing the flesh, as you said, you know, what would you say the most common mistakes are when it, that people make when it comes to you know the networking? Besides, you know, just blabbing about themselves. Well, I'm going to speak. I'm going to speak from my own uh, hard lessons. Uh, the most common mistake after, you know, blabbing too much and not letting the other person talk mm -hmm. is when you make that relationship. Now, it, it's it's almost like a corollary of, of over-promising and under-delivering. Because I don't think most people do that on purpose. But what I'm always working on and running myself back on is everything seems to take 10 times longer in real life than it does up here. Mm -hmm. So if I tell five people, oh, great, we'll do this. We'll meet here and we'll do this and we'll set this up. And I do that five times. In my head, I feel like I can get all of that done in one week. Mm -hmm. The problem is it takes like a month to get everything set up the right way. And uh, now you got three or four people hanging who, who feel like you were just talking and blew them off and you're not taking mm -hmm. them seriously. So that, that really is, that's a danger. That's a challenge. You know, the, the, uh, over committing. Well, yeah. Have you ever heard that saying your, your, your eyes are bigger than your stomach? Mm -hmm. Well, sometimes your energy and your enthusiasm is bigger than your actual calendar. I guess is a good way of putting it. That is a good way to put it. And I think everybody kind of knows where you're coming from because as life kind of moves faster, you know, we seem to get busier, but you know, what kind of places can people I mean, network where you know they wouldn't normally consider it a uh, networking event? You know, what are what are the other places where you can meet business-minded people Sim similar to Toastmasters, as you mentioned? Other places where you can network similar to Toastmasters. Boy, that is a good question. I mean, you know, you're you're kind of calling me out here, so I'm going to think think on my feet for a second. I would say if you're really creative and aggressive, um, how about conventions and conferences? Mm -hmm. I would imagine, I mean, even if you're not a part of it, Orlando, right. aren't we like the second largest convention and conference capital in the world just behind Las Vegas? There's stuff going on all the time. Why couldn't you just kind of, you know, crash or like, what are the, not, these days they call it photo bombing. How about conference bombing? <laughs> You're going to coin your own phrase. And yeah, we'll do it, we'll do it kind of, together, and we got to record it too. <laughs> what kind of relationship should be you really be looking for uh, when you attend, you know, a business function as as a product company? You know, if you have a product and you're going to a business function, what kind of relationship could you be uh, making? There? Well, one of one of my best friends out there in the um, in the real estate industry, he's also a coach and he'll talk to my students. And one of the things he likes to remind them is relationships that begin with a check end. Everybody's waiting for the rest of the sentence, but that's it, period. Relationships that begin with a check end. So I believe it's more of my natural personality. It's my comfort area my comfort zone but i also believe the if you really want balanced well-rounded success even if you're selling a product start with the person make sure that you're getting into a relationship with a good person mm. because if you're not getting in a relationship with a good person they're going to stab you in the back or you're not going to be able to count them, or they're going to let you down they're going to tell you something where they, they never intended on following through, just get you off your back. Right. And if you think about it, Joel, they're, they're already telling you what the rest of the long-term relationship is gonna be like. Mm -hmm. Now, personally, I can't stand that stuff. I won't do business. I'm not gonna be friends with somebody like that. And I absolutely will not get into business. I won't hire somebody like that. And I won't get into a longer-term relationship like that. Because I know it's, it's a, it's a, it's a signal, it's a sign of what you have to come and I just don't want that in my life. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes you have to take a leap of faith and say no and un just have faith and believe. If you're saying no 
to the bad stuff. You are leaving room for the good stuff to fill the void. And something's going to fill that void. I believe people have more choice in this than they believe. I think what you're talking about is really you are the sum of your friends and uh, you know that kind of moves over into business as well where you're the sum of your your five or ten closest uh, networking partners well I believe that and I think we both believe that yeah you know, the, the other thing is and the, you know eh, this is where the mercenary part comes in because there's a warm fuzzy part and then there's a real life where the pedal hits the metal mercenary part it's wonderful to get out there and network and make friends with great people. But if you're out there for business, is this someone who can actually pull the trigger mm -hmm. and give you an order? Are they someone who's a decision maker or are they just a nice guy? Right. Yeah. Nice, nice people are great, but if you're there for business, you have to figure out, is this the person I need to be talking to that's gonna be able to help my business and expand my business? And that's a good segue into our next question, which was from a member. You know, what can I do? to stand out locally so that you know people can learn about me and my product line? Well, you have to have some semblance of, of um, I really can't think of the right phrase. I'm, not, I'm trying to come up with a phrase that encapsulates self-marketing. Yeah. You have to feel that you are, you're worth it. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'll give you a story example to maybe you can help me fill in the, fill in the blanks here. Uh, one of the greatest teachers I've ever had. I don't know, am I allowed to mention names on this? Sure. Okay. His name is Mark S. Russo. He's over there in Tampa. And he still teaches. He taught me a lot of things uh, probably 20, 25 years ago I still remember. And one of the most amazing things he ever taught me was everyone is always doing the best they can with what they have. We talked a lot about it that day and it made a huge impact on me. And it changed the way I started dealing with people, including people who I felt were letting me down or being honest. You know what? That's the best that they could do. One of the things I tell my students is, uh, I really feel that we are the best real estate school in Florida. Uh, we do things differently. It's 100% my decision. I tell them I don't wake up in the morning and ask myself, what is the third best way that I can teach my students today? Mm -hmm. Everything I do, every second of the day, every time I'm in front of my students, I'm doing things the absolute best way that I can think of. And I think I'm doing it better than everybody else, or I would do it differently. So for that reason, that's how we market ourselves. We're the best real estate school in Florida. I really believe that. Um, other people with other schools can disagree. They should disagree, but that's the way I feel. So one of the things you want to do, and again, it's, it's kind of easier to do in this day of internet technology than getting out there and walking into rooms and saying, hey, by the way, my name's Andy, I'm the, I'm the best whatever. But you can put that out there for what I call your SEO and SEM hooks. Mm -hmm. And then pretty soon, when people start searching for something, what you really want is to pop up. Because, you know, again, the Google to me is extremely important right. in the 21st century in this day and age as far as even local marketing and making yourself stand out. If somebody wants the 10th best whatever widget maker in Orlando, mm -hmm. you know, hopefully you're not popping up as the 10th best widget maker. You want to be the best, the absolute best. Yeah. And if you could leave our audience with, you know, the best thing that they can do to prepare their business for success this year, you know, what can they do to make the biggest impact locally uh, to develop that local network? Well, you, you kind of asked me two questions there. What's okay. the best thing they can do to prepare for success? And then you asked, what's, what can they do this year to make the biggest impact locally? Mm -hmm. All right. The thing that they can do to give themselves the best chance of success is they got to have a good business plan. Uh, take the time, take, you know, take a, even five minutes is more than most people ever put into a business plan and do a sensitivity analysis. Don't blue sky stuff. While you're doing your business plan, you're looking at your strengths, and your weaknesses, and where's your business coming from? What are your expenses going to be? Mm -hmm. I mean, when you're really talking about success, if, if higher is good, you know, estimate a little bit lower. And if lower is good, Estimate a little bit higher, and if it still works, 
you might have something there. And along with that, you know, focus on the focus on the top things that bring you success. A lot of people it kind of goes on with the Pareto principle of the 80-20. I've had friends who do this. They focus on the detailed minutia. Mm-hmm. It kind of makes them feel better, get it done. But from a leadership perspective, it's doing nothing to bring business and income. In. Right. Focus on the big picture. Hire people or, or, or save it till like, you know, 11 o'clock at night and get the little minutia done. Mm-hmm. Now, as you know, as far as making an, uh, an impact and getting out there, um, asking, 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 asking your friends, your social media partners, your business partners to share the word, tell their friends, never, never be afraid to ask for a five-star Google review. Never be afraid to ask for a five-star Facebook review. Never be afraid to ask for a five-star Yelp review. You have to ask them. If you have an event, ask them, would you please tell all your friends? Um, And leave them a thought. By the way, uh, let me know if I can do the same for you Mm -hmm. and then watch how everything grows. That's great advice. Well, I I appreciate your time and I appreciate your experience. Thank you so much, Andy. Joe, it was my pleasure. Good luck. And if I can do anything to help you, if I can help you, you let me know.